Thank you. All in favor? Motion's carried. Okay, the adoption of the previous minutes of the policies and priorities meeting. Okay, Mayor Dahl. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh. I so uh, move to accept the minutes as presented for April 3rd, 2023. Any comments, errors, omissions noted? If not, question, all in favor? That motion's carried. Is there any business arising out of the minutes? Not seeing any. Not seeing any. I'll call on our CEO to uh, introduce our delegations. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh. Uh, today we have James Carpenter with us, the chair of Central Alberta Economic Partnership, along with the vice chair, uh, chief standing on the road from the Ma Maswichis community. So with that, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Carpenter up to uh, lead, lead us to this presentation. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Council, for having us today. I would uh, extend regards from our Executive Director, Tracy Gardner, who's under the weather. Um, but with that, I would just say um, congratulations to Tracy Gardner, our new Executive Director of CAPE. Her first day is actually today. And um, we thought how fitting would have been to have her here, but unfortunately, she is under the weather. I would like to introduce uh, my dear friend, Chief Leonard standing on the road. He's the chief of Montana Nation uh, in Musquachis, where the four nations sit. And we're so proud to have him here as uh, the Grand Chief of Treaty 6, representing 17 First Nations in Alberta. And with that, Madam Mayor. I'd like to invite uh, Chief standing on the road to come to the center. blanket and for you for carrying this we also have a small gift bag with some souvenirs from the town of Olds. Would you like me to put your blanket in there for you? Okay. Again uh, it's an honor to have you at our council meeting today. Uh, I believe they would like to take a photo with myself and then a photo with our council if you're willing. Yeah. I'd just like to ask the administration, where would you like the photo taken? Okay. So, um, I'll just move this table over to me and have you both just face maybe the camera. Oh. <laughs> face the camera. There we go. <laughs> and then we'll have council come and join us. Oh, sure. Did, did you need us to move? One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'd ask council to please join us. <coughs> Would it be better to go behind the flags or in here? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
see you later. Mr. Chair, would it be okay if the chief brought greetings to the town? Sure, that would be great. Well, first of all, I, I'm grateful for the invitation to come and meet your uh, council, uh, Deputy Mayor. And uh, how do I address you, your worship, or I guess? As a, <laughs> well, but, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> being part of a CAPE, this is how I, I broke out of that, uh, I guess, the normal uh, functions for uh, our operations. Because uh, <coughs> when I became chief, people wanted change. And when I laid out the plan to my uh, staff and the wishes, they made it happen. But there was other uh, avenues that uh, we used that uh, the province or the federal government uh, presented, which is the, <coughs> the 10 year grant program. We, we had to uh, be uh, eligible for it and uh, be I, I, I don't really know, the financial roles that uh, it, it represents our communities, we had to fit into it and get accepted and uh, get a certificate for it. And it took us 18 months because we already had it pre-planned, but it's just the process that the government uh, put us through. And uh, that was our major uh, starting gate to uh, <coughs> build up uh, the nations. But as uh, being a part of CAPE, I wanted to uh, get the other First Nations involved, but that's such a hard uh, process, uh, uh, being alone in this uh, organization, because we're so entrenched into that uh, Indian Act, and, uh, <coughs> being controlled by uh, ISC, they call it Indian Affairs. Uh, <clears throat> but as a result, we're a small nation, we were able to do that, to step out of the box. And being part of the, the CAPE, I got to meet all the, the mayors, town council, but I, I've never really participated in, the, in this way, to uh, get introduced and say my piece. <clears throat> we we try to work with the, the municipalities and because a lot of the history, everything that's coming is surfacing now, the truth about the history, we're in it together because we inherited, I inherited uh, what was presented to my people, you know. And to, in order to start the healing process, we have to set up the systems. And the systems that we created, we, we can, we, we can uh, I guess, convert it to the, the dominant society's way, such as uh, this kind of group, and, and dealing with the government. And my, my major, message all the time is if you if you want to get to know us let's create a relationship whether it's personal business or government we have to get to know each other as we've been in existence for the past 150 years and we've been surviving side by side but we've never actually talked about how we can work together or maybe support each other in whatever uh, 
endeavor, endeavors that uh, we're pursuing. One of my main goals is to heal people, and that's to create jobs, that independence, education. We have a lot of teachers, social workers in my community. We're saturated with them, but we don't have enough work for them or the systems to be able to sustain ourselves. So I'm always looking for outside expertise and bringing them in. <clears throat> Since I've been chief, I've been able to establish my governance in such a way that we're not micromanaging. We allow the staff to have the autonomy to, to do what's best interest for, for my community and my people in my Montana First Nations. And also the entities, they have the same setup. <clears throat> we're, we're the controllers, but we're not in there every day. And if there's any decisions that need to be made, we get, uh, we get informed and we make decisions that way. So we've been successful, but it's just now, how do I bring along my people, the young people, to learn about self-governance? Self-governance starts with yourself uh, to be responsible. And that's uh, <clears throat> what I've been trying to practice and uh, teach to my young ones, even my counsel. So it's such an honor for me to, to be here to present to you my my role as a grand chief i represent 16 other nations along with my community so that makes 17 where i speak for <coughs> treaty six nations but i i don't speak just uh in, individually i make sure i i get what the wishes to understand what the wishes are for the other nations so I can support them in my role. I'm only here for one year. And one, well, how I came to this position is, there's a rotation for Grand Chief. Muscogee's uh, MCTC, Muscogee's Chief Tribal Council. It was our turn to take that role. And since I'm the longest standing chief for this year, they chose me. And, uh, and I took the challenge, and uh, <clears throat> and it's been really uh, educational for me because I, I meet meet a lot of great people that want to make a uh, difference in everybody's lives, and I'm a part of it. And uh, I'll I'll contribute however way I can. Thanks for your. Uh, Thank you, Chief, standing on the road. And just a personal comment. I remember when you first came on the board for CAPE, and I'm happy to see you, your purpose, you forward your purpose, and also congratulations on becoming Grand Chief of the Confederacy of the Treaty Six. So thank you again. And Mr. Carpenter, do you have a few things to say? Quick update on CAPE, and I'll be brief because I think we're probably tight for time. Um, so as you know, uh, Tracy uh, Gardner is our new executive director, and um, we're quite excited, as uh, the entire CAPE board is. It was a big transition and a big change for us. Some of the top highlights to note um, for you guys, uh, when you asked me to, to fill the position of uh, business rep, I obviously I ran on the board, and then I've started my second term as the chair of the board. And I wanted uh, to see some measurable outcomes and some results. So that's part of the reason why we made some changes. But on a good news front, uh, when I was first asked to be on this with this organization, you asked me to get involved with, uh, or previous council and council members asked me to get involved on the transportation logistics task force. As as everybody roughly familiar with, so establishing corridors and transportation and logistics. Uh, quickly on that board, I um, assessed and made some recommendations that our board bought into, which would be that the corridor we were working on through the mountains um, would be championed by the First Nations, so it's very fitting 
Uh, a lot of the reason why Chief Leonard ran for vice chair is we've been working uh, quite diligently working with First Nations in our regions as well as on the BC side. And then uh, also I championed the board to um, look at our projects a little bit differently than be us being championed for a project and then once we had it to a certain stage that we'd be able to hand them off and move to the next project so the good news i have to report today is we have confirmation from the transportation minister just over a month and a half ago that we've received one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in funding for a new feasibility study uh, for that actual corridor that this council has been involved with now for the last three years so that's a big uh, step forward and so what I've told the board and what I, my vision for the transportation logistics is we would get the transportation study which justifies the whole action and what the economic uh, spin-offs would be for central Alberta including Olds and then that we would hand it off to the a next team that would take it so that our board could move on to the next project uh, and of course the team going forward would include the Grand Chief and the government of Alberta and the government of BC also can report that we've had meetings with um, the infrastructure bank and they're very excited to also participate and uh, should we meet the requirements that they want there's up to another million dollars for us for the feasibility so I give you that news because when I first went on to this board for for this town I wasn't sure what exactly I was getting into um, but I'm very happy that that's moving forward as well as there's going to be um, a delegation coming through in the summertime with uh, 30 to 50 uh, investors um, but I'm not going to take that uh, fire from your economic development officer who's also been working on that project but we're going to be having people come through this community and they're actually going to be staying here and hubbing out to look at five other communities so this town has been selected in a group of six by a group of uh, investors uh, and so that's going to be very exciting and that will be around the 17th to the 20th of July and we'll be giving you more details on that and how this community may choose to participate but it will be based out of, out of this town. Also I have confirmation on July the 6th you'll all be getting an invitation but we're going to have the Premier of Nova Scotia here and a few other Premiers that are going to be uh, hubbing in this area for an evening of um, networking and we're going to be inviting all of the Cape uh, and mayors from all over and some other premiers and delegates and so I'm hopeful that the town of Olds uh, will be participant in that which I'm sure you would love to and it will be a wonderful evening um, and it's being billed again that it's being hosted out of Olds uh, there's no commitments on on any of this uh, on, on the part of you as a council or community financially at this point and so um, with that I'll quickly spin it to any questions Any questions from members of council? <clears throat> thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh, and thanks, uh, James, for the update. Uh, I just have a, a question or two. One is, um, going forward, uh, can you just tell us how CAPE operates a bit? I know there's the board, uh, and you're the chair of that board I believe if that's the correct word but how does the flow of information go updates on a on a regular basis it, it's seen and I know CAPE is going through a bit of a transition but the flow of information coming out seems to be a little limited in terms of action items what's taking place is there any way to are there any plans being considered to change that improve that flow of information back to the 46 or 50 municipal members Thank you for that question, Councillor Wilson. Yes, uh, I made aggressive moves and we l removed everyone from our offices to change that. So um, it wasn't just one person that left our office, we had more than one. And so I expect a dramatic turnaround within the next 30 days that you'll be most pleased with in the information flow. Of course, um, Executive Director Gardner is very well known to everyone here as being very organized and a very uh, high level communicator. I think it's going to be a real breath of fresh air. Um, a lot of the positions that we, we would have maybe had staffed are going to contract positions to also keep our costs down, run lean, but also have an uh, absolute professional that's working on it. So I would only ask that you would bear with us a little bit more. Uh, I think the, the short-term pain is going to be for a long-term gain, Councillor. Thank you. 
Thank you, James. Those certainly are sound like encouraging words and are going down a path that I was hopeful, again, because it seemed to be just a little bit of a black box or a silo. From my perspective, I was the, the Town of Olds member or representative for a year. Um, and so, yeah, just seeing the flow of information and the amount of information was a little bit lacking at times. So, Might I? Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Uh, one other uh, change that I want to see and we're going to do is um, prior to COVID, we used to, but we're going to be traveling around and doing our meetings outside of Red Deer. Uh, so we'll be making the rounds and there'll be opportunities for engagement with the council. And how we would see that is if we asked to come and ha host here on that particular day, then we would invite council in for lunch and we would pay for a lunch for you to all, would all, all be able to come in, join our board for an hour at lunch and then a, a half an hour to an hour round table discussion so you would also have opportunity to hear from other communities of what they're actually doing and what they're achieving so we're planning some more uh pointed engagement uh with council uh, on the go forward councillor ryan thank you deputy mayor walsh i just have a question with regards to um the trip that you took last uh, spring it was to india and i'm um, just wondering if there's any follow-up from there that you could provide us because i know that uh you'd seen some success uh, in in uh, forming some relationships over there so i was just wondering if you had any a little bit of an update on that yes councillor ryan thank you for that so um we actually did have one investment group uh came into didsbury and made a large investment in didsbury and the spin-off of what's coming here this summer is in large part due to uh, relationships out of India. So there'll be, as I said, 30 to 50. They're guaranteeing 30, but they think there'll be as high as 50, as well as an uh, elected MLA is also going to be attending the trip as well. And so it's just uh, building the relationships to build trust. And from the India trip, of course, engaging with your EDO and working with some of the programs that the government's offering right now, including the streams program for entrepreneurs to invest and, and start businesses in your community. It's, it's hard to measure at all, Councillor Ryan, but uh, we're, we're very hopeful that in, all, in July that you're gonna be uh, quite excited to see uh, who's coming and it'll be an opportunity for this town to showcase. And I believe it's gonna be uh, hosted over at the Pomeroy. So it'll be an easy walk. <laughs> Thank you. Any further questions? Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh. And, and yeah, just another question. Um, I, I know there's certainly interaction that takes place with, it, with between yourself and, and our economic development folks and, and administration, but just wondering going forward, and, and I know it is, again, very fluid and evolving, but what are the ways that um, the town and our administration can or should be leveraging CAPE expertise? You mean You mentioned you've for lack of a better word, cleaned house within Cape and things are evolving there. But what are the ways boiling it down into our little area or big area that we should and can be looking to leverage Cape beyond things like the trans corridor and efficiency of projects and everything else that you've got underway? Great question. Uh, well, if you're following what's going on right now in Alberta, the government just changed the streams program where uh, somebody could get immigration and come into this community. They had to have a minimum of $200,000 investment. They've now lowered it to a $100,000 investment. I think working directly with Sandra and coming up with opportunities that exist in this town is going to be a big part of it. Um, you know, CAPE in the past has put out, and Mercy would, would know that for different forms and trying talking about our town. I'm not big, honestly, uh, Councillor Wilson, I'm not big on that. I want smaller, winnable. I want to see uh, for you as a community to be ready in July to actually impress uh, investors. And it's not just on uh, what we have as a community, but what we have in the people and the investment they're going to make when they bring their family. So I think that with some of the initiatives that uh, your EDO has already been doing with uh, promoting businesses and promoting, um, and part of me, I forget the name, it's just slipping me of the program you launched last year. Pardon me? Invest Olds, thank you. I can get away with saying I forget because there's 34 municipalities, so I'm gonna get the names wrong. I think you're already on track. And I think now is when we need to put a little gas in the tank and, and just really come together. I think that you know, you'll see in July, it's gonna be as important for investors to meet the mayor and council 
because that's uh, when you change and go into different cultures that's a very very important it's a respect thing just like having the grand chief today how much you honor them and i thank you for that uh, honor that he deserves right but it's i think as you guys come together i think more engagement from council will actually be necessary on these special events that uh, Sandra is going to be involved with and hosting and so if you can show up to those things I, it, it honestly helps and um, that of course uh, transitions right into the fact that we need manpower and working with Olds College and working with some of the programs that are available right now I would also challenge a lot of our municipalities that we have to um, some CAPE needs to be the information vessel to help businesses to find the grants and to find the programs that are available and I think that's a move that we're also really starting to make and to get these small wins but personally I would love to see um, new businesses opening all the time and and last year for those that don't know was the biggest year in Canadian history I believe we had one million new Canadians last year and that was uh, immigration so we have to figure out how we're going to navigate growth because we're still losing our young people from even this community. So we have to figure out how we're gonna create. So I'm sorry that was a pretty broad answer, but I hope there were snippets in there that would have addressed your question. Thank you. Or you have a supplementary question, Councillor Wilson. I'll be cautious. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh. I'll be cautious whether it's truly supplementary, but perhaps, uh, James, if you could just comment briefly. I know one of the previous initiatives for CAPE was the Regional Economic Growth Strategy. And again, I know things are evolving, but could you touch on that and where that's at and roll out and what it means again from my little siloed world of olds and how that's going to benefit us? Well, again, good question. Um, I'd like to have my executive director here for that. Uh, so I would ask that you would consider inviting us back at some point when uh, Tracy is here. But I would say is that um, if we, again, I'm just hubbing around something that's on my plate right now, literally dealing with it two hours ago was this trip in, in August, or July, pardon me. Um, the group of investors had to come in and they had to decide uh, where they were actually gonna go because obviously you can't go all the way up to Camrose, Camrose County and Pinoca right so they had to pick an area and so when we talk about this regional collaboration this is maybe going to be a little bit of a test for us in July to see six communities and I'll tell you it's Carstairs it's it's uh, Olds it's Bowden it's Innisfail and uh, Sundry so five what did I say Olds Disbury Old Disbury pardon me thank you and so um, when we talk about collaboration Councillor Wilson one of the one of the topics that came up and we've already had meetings we've had your people on meetings with us and everything else and trying to come up with a plan on how uh, Bowdoin and Innisfail are going to have to work together now because they're only going to hub out of here and they're going to do a morning here and then they're going to drive and they're going to do a tour of Bowdoin and Innisfail in the same day. So this whole idea of starting to work together and collaborating and not as much competing for the same person but showing strength in numbers. So we're going to have a mini version of what we're talking about with these six communities and I think that um, our goal is that each one would have a, a win, right? And I actually think that by collaborating, you're going to get ideas that other communities are doing that we're not doing here in Olds. And so, again, I'd like to have the executive director to address more, but if I could give that a snippet of what's going forward. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. I forgot his last name. Carpenter. Carpenter. It's okay. <laughs> Plummer. Mr. Plummer. Okay. Thank you for attending today and thank you for attending with your vice chair no, I'm just chief grand chief leonard standing on the road it's been a pleasure and extend our congratulations to tracy also that she couldn't be here so i'll entertain a motion to accept us all for information oh. thank you once again and uh, on behalf of council we also re reciprocate the words so I so move that uh, the Council thank the delegation from Central Alberta Economic Development Partnership and Chief Standing on the Road for your time and your patience to be with us today. So take care and we hope to see you in the future. Okay. Thank you for that. So all in favour? motions carry. Also I'd like to thank all the gallery who showed up today. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Moving on to page eight, operations quarterly report, 5A. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, Director Greco is with us today to lead us through this um, operations quarterly report. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Walsh and Council. Uh, Public Works has uh, over 124 kilometers of uh, roadway to maintain across a staff complement of 5.75 staff. Uh, we're currently in the process of hiring one FTE and we'll have uh, an additional two summer students uh, for the department. In utilities, we have a staff complement of six FTEs that deal with our water and wastewater infrastructure utilities will have a summer student working this summer assisting with leak detection and catch basins uh, spring can be the busiest time of year for the utilities staff in in dealing with water main breaks and always the potential for rain events like we saw last year uh, facility staff has a complement of two full-time employees that take care of buildings uh, within the town um, with the integration of uh, Parks and Recreation Department, uh, we have in place our managers in uh, Andrew Phillips and, and Ken, uh, which are learning more from their departments every day uh, to ensure that uh, their synergies exist across the departments. Uh, some of those synergies include various uh, equipment that is used in our Public Works Department. Um, I have a listing of some of our equipment that we use. Uh, we use this equipment in conjunction also with uh, sometimes external contractors. Uh, so we have a grader, couple of loaders, a backhoe, one tandem dump truck, a plow truck, single axle plow truck, a one ton truck, and a skid steer. Uh, our public works department is in full swing uh, with many of the programs uh, starting up, such as our street sweeping program, which began on uh, April 24th. Uh, line painting will also begin in the coming weeks. Uh, we'll be starting around the high traffic safety zones, such as accessible parking and school zones. Uh, public Works also assists utilities uh, in some of the catch basin maintenance that we have depending on uh, the type of weather events that we'll, we'll have coming up. Uh, our concrete repairs um, and paving consist of an early spring assessment uh, throughout the community of the town. Uh, depending on what the winter bring, it can, it can bring on some different areas of, of concern. Again, the list of repairs, uh, we don't always get completed, and that's because uh, there's new repairs every year. Uh, crews are also busy filling potholes. Uh, to date, we have completed approximately 50 potholes throughout the community, and we continue to repair those potholes. Uh, other programming we have in public works uh, includes many of much of the back alley uh, grading and graveling programs um, IR paving which will begin as soon as the asphalt plants open up which we're looking like mid-may um, as seen from the amount of programs that public works uh, has uh, they take care of throughout the community it's it's good that we're going into uh, review with council um, the large inventory of programs um, and, and work with uh, the business unit versus the amount of limited resources that we do have uh, within the department with, with a total of 5.75 FTEs. Uh, winter road maintenance. Uh, some of our information on uh, our winter uh, maintenance program, uh, we, we actually work with 12 local contractors uh, on uh, snow removal. Uh, from November to March, we totaled 1,981 hours. Um, this year, as many of you are aware, it consisted of a higher than normal uh, year of snow accumulation. Uh, we had four different uh, contracted grader companies that we worked with uh, this year. That included 330 hours of uh, contracted uh, grader. Uh, we also use our own internal grader, so it's a concerted effort to, to keep uh, snow removal on the go um, between our resources and the contractor's resources. 
Uh, our 2023 snow removal costs sit at uh, 174,000 uh, on a budget of 140,000. Snow removal uh, is an extensive effort uh, when considering uh, the resources that we do. Again, we have 5.75 uh, staff members um, and we work in conjunction with uh, contractors. Uh, we clean, to, to clean the entire community, uh, we're looking at approximately 15 work days uh, to clean the entire town. Uh, if we do get snowfalls in between, um, say, for example, we're completing green events and then we get another snow event, that's where we might have to hit the reset button and go back to uptown as per the service standards. So in uptown, uh, the service standard is 7.5 uh, centimeters of snow. Uh, and then we activate crews. Uh, next. Uh, other pressures uh, with respect to staff on top of uh, snow removal. Um, we also have our um, public works staff. Uh, they completed five burials and seven cremains burials between October and March. Uh, utility staff uh, completed one mainline break and four service line breaks, which were town-owned uh, facilities. And we also uh, help facilitate six service line breaks uh, with utility staff. Moving over to uh, parks and recreation, again, um, uh, trails and snow removal has been transitioned into uh, parks and recreation. Uh, we also maintain uh, 18 kilometers of uh, trail and sidewalk. Uh, the way this works is day one, we consist of a pass uh, through the entire trail and sidewalk system using three pieces of equipment. Uh, we also do a lot of hand shoveling, uh, everything from uh, new to you, which won't consist of in the future, but the aquatic center, library, museum, uh, rec center, town office, and RCMP and fire department. Uh, day two consists of going back to all trails and sidewalks uh, to widen the path and, and also take care of some of the uh, ice removal. Next. And so in lies the further discussion uh, with council as to what level of service is required in snow removal, plowing and ice control given the amount of resources that we do have. Uh, consideration for the discussion and review are, are the financial impacts of, of snow uh, removal, uh, the location uh, and, and lack of existing snow dump locations and possible future locations. So all these are future considerations for what we want to talk about in, in uh, service level review. Uh, timeliness um, is key. Uh, again, it takes us three to four weeks to complete the entire community. Um, whether or not that's acceptable is, is for further uh, discussion at service level. Um, snow removal requires a lot of equipment and manpower uh, just to maintain our current service level. Uh, it also requires departmental resources uh, from bylaw enforcement uh, when it does come to uh, efficiencies. Next. Moving over to uh, utilities. Uh, again, uh, last time, uh, in the last update, uh, I shared with you that we have a major water leak in one of our developments in town uh, that we've been uh, working to, to get repaired. Uh, again, the leak was discovered in February and it's estimated at uh, approximately $2,200 uh, per day when we uh, account for also the, the wastewater. Um, so again, this has been uh, escalated as a, as a top priority. Uh, there has been a contractor that has repaired four of the leaks, um, but it still does continue. Uh, I, again, credit to our operations manager and staff to expedite uh, this extensive project. Uh, the actual um, overall fix started on April 28th. We are waiting on approval uh, before we commence the project and it's anticipated that the project will be completed by uh, July 7th. Uh, again, the project consists of putting a vault meter in on the property where we will begin to read the meter 
um, for all unbilled water. Uh, the project's estimated at 350000 and so uh, we've had to make some adjustments to our um, inflow and infiltration reduction program. So as listed here, um, we had intended to have $300,000 as, uh, assigned to SANI relining. Uh, we're going to move 100000 of that into uh, the repair of this water leak. Um, so we're basically looking at our SANI relining program moving back to our 2022 levels. Um, the same would apply for um, our uh, manhole refurbishment. Uh, so we had intended on spending 100000 on that program. We're scaling that back to 50000 to account for this significant leak. Next, uh, other programs. Um, again, I've uh, talked a little bit about our smart cover uh, project. Uh, again, this is to identify infiltration problems within the community. Um, we have these covers in place. Uh, they are already collecting uh, baseline data for us. Um, we will be completing the training within uh, the month um, as to what we do with the data, how to analyze it, and the potential to move these um, smart covers within the community and find some of the other baseline data and uh, get ready for, for spring so that we can gain more data and have a better understanding of where our problems are within the community. SANI relining, uh, the RFP is closed on April 28th. So again, um, we had intended for approximately 2,800 meters. We've scaled that back down uh, with this significant water leak. Again, it's going to be uh, roughly 1,800 meters, we think. Uh, our water meter pilot project, uh, the request for tender has closed. Uh, again, the current process we're currently evaluating and interviewing per, uh, prospective suppliers. Uh, we'll be installing 100 meters. Uh, we're going to be evaluating the performance of these meters. We want to make sure we, uh, we get it right before we go into phase two of our inflow and infiltration program, which would begin a third, a third, a third of the community in, in the future years. Um, some interesting data. Right now, 87% uh, of our meters are mechanical. Um, Installing new meters once we, uh, after the pilot project's over, and we begin um, the entire community. Uh, that's where we see uh, a really big bang for our buck um, in, in dealing with uh, replacing some of these mechanical meters. Um, it's estimated anywhere from uh, three to six percent uh, water loss savings um, in, in going to an up upgraded meter. Moving over to planning and infrastructure, um, we have our one main project, uh, 52nd Street. So this is phase two. Uh, we'll be completing uh, 51st Ave to 53rd. Uh, the project tenders have gone out. They closed last week. Uh, we'll be uh, determining a vendor this week. And we'll be having a kickoff meeting along with a formal communications plan. Um, it's uh, not yet known whether or not we will uh, have enough in the budget to uh, replace or repair 65th Ave. Uh, we do have some roadway there that it, it obviously needs work. So we'll be doing an evaluation through our, our programming and budgeting on a path forward with uh, 65th. Other projects that we have going on within the town, um, we're working with Minor Ball to procure the signs for the rotary score clock. Uh, once uh, procured, we'll be uh, working, uh, working forward on installation of that. The Kiwanis uh, John Statham Playground, um, again, we're getting good weather right now. Um, we have resources on this project. Uh, we're anticipating this project to be complete mid-June. The Rotary Playground uh, construction is basically beginning this week. Uh, this project, again, uh, is slated to end uh, in June. Uh, and again, a lot of these projects are, are weather permitting. Uh, 
the last project with uh, planning and infrastructure are our uh, pickleball courts. Um, so again, we didn't have time in the project last year to complete the acid edge painting. Um, we will have a total of four uh, pickleball courts uh, painted this year. And uh, that's expected to be completed mid uh, mid spring to, to early summer. Um, landscaping around the pad, uh, budget permitting, uh, where we did install the pad, there's um, it's a little bit of a step up there. Uh, we do intend on uh, doing some landscaping, uh, budget permitting. Uh, some interesting data with respect to our development uh, permits. Um, we are seeing some uh, continuing trend in, in some solar installations, so our planning and, and uh, development departments very busy. So in 2021, we saw um, four uh, solar uh, permit installations. Uh, 2022, we saw nine. In 2023, we've seen five in uh, April alone. Um, we're also seeing uh, some change of use uh, permit applications coming through. So in April, we've had six of these, uh, including uh, a restaurant, a dental clinic, uh, fitness center, and a golf simulator lounge. And I will open it up for any questions. Thank you, Director Greco. Hands went up. Mm -hmm. I'll start with Councillor Cummings. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I do have a, a couple of quick questions about roads. So you talked about the, I think the 65th, I got to scroll back there, 65th Avenue, but there are two other road projects that I wanted to talk about too that seem incomplete. I'm not sure if they're still under budget from last year that are being done. That's the one behind the brick. Um, that's r the roadway that's replacing the alleyway that's there. And I don't know what the name of the road is, but the road that comes off of, uh, 67th Avenue and goes up into Rotary Park, Rotary Athletic Park. Um, that road to me seems undone. I'm not sure if it's something that's supposed to be finished at a later date or if it's actually considered finished because there's a good two inches of gap on the curb. Like there looks like there should be another layer of asphalt down on that road. And now I know that that happens sometimes, the road is built the engineers determine that it should settle for a number of years before the remaining road is complete. And I'm not sure if we're in that, or if that road is supposed to be already done, or if we even know what that state of that road is. But those two road projects, I know the brick was last year. I'm just not sure if that's going to be already budgeted for in last year's budget and continued this year. Uh, uh, to comment on the, um, the roadway behind the brick, uh, so the brick did we did complete the first lift. Uh, there is intended to be the second lift go on there uh, towards the end of summer. Um, so that project we're also working on the tail end of um, our 2022 projects. Uh, as for the rotary, um, I'm not exactly sure. I would have to get more information back to you with respect uh, to I, that. I can, I can speak on that one. It was never finished when it was built. So you're right, uh, you generally speaking on virgin ground roads, when the first layer of asphalt is on, it's left to sit for a season to settle appropriately. You see that in Williams Avenue, for instance, in the Highlands. Um, right now, it does need a second lift to bring it up to grade with the curb and therefore the catch basins because drainage is an issue right there. But there's no set budget for it yet. However, thinking out loud, the Memorial Drive RFP that was mentioned briefly here, 65 Avenue, came in significantly over budget, so we cannot do that this year. So there's going to be an option to either carry forward that money to a future year where we can um, have enough to, to spend on 65th for the full mill and relay that's required or direct that money towards something such as the 67A Avenue heading from Walmart North to Rotary Athletic Park and then West to 70th Avenue, but that will be a conversation upcoming. Thank you, Councillor Blatz and Mayor Dahl. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh, um, and through you to Director Greco. Um, thank you for the update on the snow removal. I know we're gonna be discussing it further 
at service level, so I'm not going to inundate you with a million questions or anything else. But I really think that this is good information that you provided to Council today, and I think this would be e equally important to provide this to our general public in some way, shape, or form, so people are aware of the challenges that we face to do snow removal in, in the entire town of Oles. So thank you for that. Mayor Dahl. Thank you. Um, just speaking in operations uh, again, I j can somebody please remind me who is in charge of that parking lot uh, at the brick, the blockades? For some reason, this weekend I saw three work trucks with trailers come right down the middle of that ramp again, not using that alley um, in the middle of the what we were trying to deflect. I don't know if the barriers were moved or it was um, mind-boggling to see the truck push his way through the traffic there and come right off that that uh, parking lot again. Yeah, so so the alleyway is is intended to be uh, barricaded along with posts and cable put on at the at the property line. So I'm not I'm not exactly sure where this incident happened, but uh, it is intended to be blockaded through as part of the project. Is the where the orange bar barricades are now, and then there's two concrete ones, but there's an open space somehow again, and they're starting to, to revert back to the old ways. Yeah, so that, that, that will be um, rectified at the completion of the project. So that is part of the project. Councillor Cummings. Mr. Chairman, uh, on a different note here, when we go to the water meter project, um, I've heard from a little birdie that there's been some supply chain issues with re receiving meters in general. These 100 test meters that we're looking at to put in this year for the water meter pilot project, have they already been secured or is there an issue with getting those as well? There was an issue with um, the supply of these meters. Um, what we decided to do was go out actual for, for tender on this project. So given the current, as one, as part of those challenges with supply, uh, we decided to go out for tender. And so we're just in the, in the final stages of procuring a vendor for those, for those meters. Councillor Daly, go ahead. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh. Um, and going back to the road uh, topic, um, there was still a completion to be done on 57th Avenue, I believe, up by the hospital. Is that scheduled for this year as well, where that road repair was done and we now have a neck jarring situation happening there? The soft road was repaired, and then I believe uh, last year was mentioned that the hard surfacing would go on this year. So, just me. I can take that one. Uh, yeah, so that's just at the town boundary on 57th to the north. Um, right now, the grader has to maintain it, and we just want to see how it settled from, because it was, it was a late fall um, repair. The intention would be to overlay it this year assuming the substructure is in good shape so but you're, you're right we do need to we do need to get a, a grader on there a bit more frequently given the the chuck holes that are prevailing the transitions between the pavement and the gravel is quite yeah that's a, probably the settling that's occurring yeah 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 thank you councillor wilson and councillor ryan thank you deputy mayor walsh and thank you director Greco, for the report i have Hopefully two questions related to potholes. One is, um, you mentioned to date we've fixed about 50 potholes. So I guess, well, uh, is that simply just shoveling hot mix off the back of a truck into a hole? Because you mentioned the IR paver hasn't been commissioned yet for this year, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, currently we're essentially using cold mix to, to repair the potholes. And then we're expected uh, when asphalt plants open, we'll be firing up the IR paver. Supplementary to that? Truly a supplemental. Okay. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh. Uh, so further to that, with the IR paver, I am aware of our budget constraints. You, you know, you've mentioned that a couple times throughout the report. Uh, 
Have we given any consideration to running the IR paver on an extended shift? Or maybe we do already. I'm thinking taking advantage of the long summer days. It's daylight at 6 in the morning. It's daylight till 10 at night. I'm not suggesting the same people run the machine. But, and you've also touched on resourcing issues, but is there a possibility, have we looked at extending the hours of that IR paver through the summer? And maybe we do already, I'm not sure. Yeah, we, we have taken a look at that and we, we will be uh, most likely assigning our summer students uh, to work with a more senior staff member. Um, and that's part of the, the onboarding of uh, our, op our new operations manager as well as to look at scheduling and just w when are the best times. So we'll be going through that evaluation and it is anticipated that we'll be utilizing our summer students for some of that work. Yeah, CEO, go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. And just to add on Councillor Wilson's comment, in, in an ideal world, that's what would happen, almost like a split shift, that one starts at 7, one comes in at 12. But that we only have um, five and a half full-time bodies along with two summer student bodies. Then you take into consideration that potholes, while it's a significant part of the effort we do in summer, we also have um, line painting, sidewalk repair, um, we're going to run out of space, so I would be hesitant to say that we would be able to split shift on a regular basis enough to to make a dent. We have um, we have been more generous with the overtime costs, especially last year when we found ourselves quite far behind. But on top of that, we also have a second RFP going out in conjunction with the MIP, which is the regular RFP that's closed up for the deep underground services. This one is for a uh, smaller paving service. So last year we hired a company at a Red Deer to do some 11th hour utility dig covers, uh, asphalt covers, and it worked out quite well. Um, historically we have just hired the MIP contractor after they finished the deep underground servicing repairs. But of course, you run out of time generally if it, you don't get started till September, which we generally see. So we're hoping to make a, a better run of it this year. But to your question, it, it's just difficult with the staffing resources we currently have to make that work regularly. Thank you. Okay, Council Ryan, go ahead. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh. I just have a quick question, uh, Director Greco, and that is on the smart covers. Not knowing what the technology is and how this works, I was just wondering, do these, uh, do we put these in place for all year, or do they have to be taken out in winter time because of the, uh, you know, the cold weather? No, the, uh, the monitors are, are year round. They, they're basically installed at the, in the undercarriage of the manhole cover, and uh, we can move these around um, all year round and have them going all year round, so. Interesting, because you might see some different uh, data that happens in the in the spring and in the fall and winter. Yeah. Thank you. Council, have any more questions? Councillor Blatz, then Councillor Daly. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh, and through you to uh, Director Grieco. Um, with uh, with our catch basins, just refresh my memory, and you may have just said something, and I, I might have missed it in your earlier comments, but. We're still fixing catch basins on a regular basis because some of them were quite deteriorated to a point where they were probably dangerous. So we've now got a list, a working, revolving, evolving list of, of those catch basins and, and they're being budgeted for adequately and being replaced annually. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we treat catch basin, catch basins, uh, similar to sidewalks and pavement repairs. Uh, we do an early spring adjustment because things change over winter. Um, you could have had equipment or or damage to catch basins. Uh, they're basically prioritized as a one, two, or three, and our our public works and utilities staff. Uh, help work out those priority levels. Uh, the challenge with it is uh, it's often that the priority threes will be diverted or carried forward to the next year. And so we do have areas in the community where they need attention, but they're not an immediate safety concern. Um, so some of those get deferred into the next year. There's, um, and then we just continue on with the list year over year. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh. Um, 
excuse me, just a quick question on street sweeping. Um, will we, and I know when we've talked about it in the past, we've said we, we kind of mirror the same priority schedule that we do for snowfall clearing, I believe. Is that still the same case this year? So we will go through methodically red, purple, yellow, green, or is there a different approach being used this year to clean the streets? Uh, it's it's virtually the same approach um, with street sweep and you have a little more latitude um, it just seems that uh, the equipment's a little bit smaller there's less grading less moving equipment so uh, you have a little bit of flexibility but the process for cleaning the streets is um, virtually the same um, sometimes like this year we decided to do uptown um, a little bit earlier uh, to get that uh, done and and off like the uptown area was quite bad so uh, we started with that area of town and continue with our reds move over to our yellows and greens uh, and so forth go ahead councillor wilson thank you deputy well, mayor walsh and truly my last question and truly i, I believe a supplemental so again because i know I, I raised this point in the past just i've had residents talk to me and i, I i'm support and aware of you know doing those primary ar arterial routes the red routes and whatever but it seems to me once you get down below a certain level i've had residents talk to me and say well the street next to me was swept but my street wasn't now whether they're yellow green or whatever i don't know but and i know we've had this discussion around well isn't it just more efficient to kind of once you get past the very high primary highly prioritized routes just to do it by quadrant if the machine's in the highlands blitz the highlands get the highlands done because it seems again that we've had sporadic one street's done and then the neighboring street isn't so yeah and that, if, if if you look at the structure of the town um it's uh we pretty much do red red routes and then we work our way out so reasonably saying uh we do um we try to do it as efficiently as we can, given where the red routes transition into yellow and vice versa into green. So. Thank you. Councilor Blatz. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh. And, and just to comment, I think for all of us, um, like I had a gentleman approach me this morning regarding sidewalks, so I asked him to do report a problem with the regards to the actual address. And I think that we need to remind our general public and each one of us too, if we, if we continuously use report a problem, it's easier for our staff to monitor where these issues are and where to rectify them and answer the questions directly. So. Councillor Cummings. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So two quick questions, um, kind of related sort of. So last year, um, Scott, you gave us a, a good data on your early spring assessments for the catch basins and potholes um, and it came to to light to us at that time how many catch basins were actually in disrepair in town um, which was a surprise to I think to a lot of people and and I think the same would be said if we found out the, you said you did 50 potholes 50 potholes seems like a lot but it's not right it's, it's not really a lot compared to how many we have could, could we possibly receive that information like we did last year? The, the, I know it's a variable number that changes every day, but just so that people have a better understanding of, of what's needed, um, I'm sure we'll get that on in one of our discussions uh, through service level review or budget talks. But just to get a better idea, like saying 50 potholes were done, is that 100% of all the pothole damage? I'm gonna say no. Is it one percent of the pothole damage that we know that exists? That that type of reference might be a little bit more helpful to us than just a number um, for reference. And now I totally forgot the second question I was going to ask. Well, I'll think about that in a sec. Just to add to that, I, I mean, being perfectly honest, we don't have a current inventory of all of our potholes. Um, but I, you know, it it would be good to have our best efforts forward to, to know how many potholes we have and how much the community needs. It takes us a little bit of time to do those assessments, especially when you given, we got sidewalks, pavement repairs, potholes, catch basins. Uh, we, again, we, we have all of these different programs that fire up. We quickly have to do an assessment, kind of inventory these issues and concerns, and obviously take care of the immediate safety ones 
um, but also to log all of this information is, is ongoing. And to, to Councillor Blatt's, it is important that uh, residents, uh, if you do see it, uh, report it in to report a problem. And uh, we also, the limited staff that we do have are, are our eyes and ears um, out for these problems. Your memory's improved, Counts coming. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Thanks. I do remember the question. So uh, we were told a little while ago that our street sweeper was broken and unavailable for street sweeping, and we've contracted out uh, street sweepers to do that work for us. I think there were two, two vehicles that were out street sweep. Well, I noticed two, so I don't know if there were more. Um, out sweeping the streets. Uh, I'm wondering if we can get at the end of the season some feedback on, or there's a plan to get some feedback on the effectiveness of contracting them out rather than um, having our own vehicle in house, or if that'll be part of one of our other discussions with service level, because that seems to be going. I mean, I've only heard compliments about the work that's being done, so I don't know how that's working. I'd like to get some more information on that in the future. Go ahead, CEO Williams. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh. Um, to Councillor Cummings' point, y yes, it's uh, it'll be coming forward. I'm not sure at the next service level in May, just because we have a few other things on the docket to prepare. But that contractor versus in-house piece with street sweeping is certainly one of the several uh, contracted possibilities we want to discuss. But, but I, I, I would agree, it's gone quite smoothly. Any more questions for Director Greco? Not seeing any, I'll entertain a motion to accept his report. Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh. I make the motion that Council accept the verbal, option, verbal operations quarterly report and update. All in favor? That's carried, thank you. Okay, moving on to bylaws and policy review, page 24, policy 804C, community grant program. CL Williams. Thank you again, and I'll uh, lead this one off, and Director Wagstaff is uh, here as well, should there be any specific questions. So Council has seen policy, draft policy 804C in closed session previously. Um, few recommendations on changes were provided and those have been made along with some um, some touch-ups so also the draft procedures attached it's not entirely finalized but for your information it is there um, an application is also being drafted at the moment that will form part of that procedure so for yourselves, which you know, but also for the community, this community grant program is proposed to be funded through the revenue generated from Mountain View Power, which is a um, utility contract in the town's name through a retailer based in Calgary. One key change to the policy that um, we're introducing today is the inclusion of an adjudication committee made up of community members who are also Mountain View Power customers. Um, and that committee uh, is proposed to um, provide recommendations to council on which applications to fund uh, within within an annual or biannual basis. Uh, a few more details to discuss on that. Um, those can be broken out further at a, at a later date, but for the policy itself, the question to council is today, uh, are you comfortable recommending it as is or with some changes to bring forward to a um, the next council meeting? Does council have any questions? Okay. So everybody happy with this policy and somebody would like to make a motion? <laughs> Councillor uh, Blatt. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh. Um, I move that Council accept the policy 804C Community Grant Program as presented and request the CAO to bring forward to a future Council meeting and to accept the, eight, the 804P Community Grant Program procedure as presented for information. Very good. Any questions on that motion? Councillor Ryan? 
Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Mayor Walsh. I, I uh, just had one question on the procedure to our CAO, if that's possible. And that is um, just on page 27 when we talk about uh, the two grant intakes per year. These are just intakes, uh, just for clarification, these are just intakes. These are not necessarily for us to actually provide the grant funding twice a year because, you know, we, we might have circumstances where it comes up where later in the year there could be a prudential or something like that come up and not have the funds available for twice a year distribution. Uh, good question and um, correct. It, it will depend on council's budget decision of that year. Um, the procedure can be amended on the fly much more easy than a policy can since it's with administration. But for instance, in 2023, um, just speaking um, broadly, not much fact, but it looks like given the state of the power market and the securing of a prudential with a um, GIC, which is also accruing interest, um, we will have the ability financially to do two intakes based on comparable dollar values. Um, the proposed fall intake might be a bit lower, um, but in 2024, you're right, given the volatility of the power market and our obligations, should our secure GIC not meet ASO's prudential obligations, we may have to scale back that ladder. But right now, um, the ability is there for two intakes. So, Super, thank you very much for the explanation. Any other questions? Councillor Cummings? Um, maybe, uh, sorry, just a. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Maybe just a quick uh, wording change then in that 3.2 instead of there will, there may, um, just to accommodate for that fluctuation rather than having to go again and rechange the policy every or procedure every time based on the market, just using the, may, the word may instead of will might be helpful. Can I take that as a friendly amendment or just a we have a motion on the floor. Yeah. yeah, so since it's in the procedure, council doesn't make motions on the procedure. So we, yeah, that's, that's a fair change I can make, yeah. Okay, any other questions? Not seeing any, all in favor? That motion's carried, thank you. Okay, moving on to new business. The organizational review quarterly report. Councillor, no, CEO Williamson again. <laughs> Almost got a promotion. So council has discussed this several times before. Um, what's before you today is, I would say, close to a final draft of what I'm proposing to bring to council as new business on a quarterly basis. Uh, and that is the um, 78 recommendations and their current status in, um, in actioning. The numbers 1 to 13 are a different shade to denote the direction received previously. The council would like um, those individually considered uh, to come to council for uh, acceptance or partial acceptance or to be declined. Um, everything else is um, as you saw it previously. Happy to take any questions. Obviously, most of this has not been actioned yet, and the timelines are there based on um, some high-level assumptions. But I think on a quarterly basis, it will provide a bit more, um, a bit more ability to to show progress, and then opposed to a month-to-month -month inclusion in uh, in the CAO report. But happy to take any comments, questions, or recommendations on how to Im improve it if necessary. Any questions from council? Not seeing any, again, I would entertain a motion to accept it for information. Councillor Daly, actually. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Walsh. I move that we accept the organizational review quarterly report as information. Thank you. All in favor? That motion is carried. Page 34, Council Strategic Plan. 2022 to 2032. CEO Williams. Me again. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. So the strategic plan is as it was, as passed by Council last year. What's included is an integration of the priority document, which again, Council went through in January and saw the updated document about a month, month and a half ago. Um, just trying to make it 
it's both aesthetically and grammatically understandable and uh, integrate both. Uh, but I th you've seen both documents before. Uh, what we're looking for today is, is just general acceptance of that, that these are, this, these are the priorities of Council's draft plan and that we're able to proceed accordingly. Thank you. Any questions? What, Count, our Mayor Dahl? I just have one minute question. I know when we spoke about this uh, during our, day, our workshop, we, we talked about using the Alive with Opportunity on town letterhead. Is there any more thought about that to um, incorporate that in our communications? Good question. Um, uh, yes, the, the town is just currently updating its logo for actually mostly do just some formatting issues we have with the current logo and its its size and uh, color scheme and alive with opportunity is will be included in the future logo and therefore included on letterhead and future communications any other questions then I'll entertain a motion to accept this for information okay go ahead Councillor Cummings if you have a question just a, a quick question. My uh, OCD is having some hard times here with page 41 of our package, the strategic goal number four, and half a blank screen. Uh, it's just an aesthetic thing, but it's, it's driving me nuts. And because it, it didn't occur in any of the other slides or any of the other parts of the presentation, it's just that one page for some reason has the half and half. I know it's an aesthetic thing, but that's what the whole document is, is an aesthetic thing. So I would, would like to see maybe some difference there or even a picture or something on that side of the screen just because it's so so odd compared to the rest of the pages just for you we can make that happen Thank you. so any other questions is that a motion? no i'll entertain a motion to accept it for information now uh, mayor Dahl. thank you very much uh deputy mayor walsh i would uh Move that council accept for information and direction to administration to bring back to a future regular council meeting the strategic plan. Any questions on that? Not seeing any. All in favor? That motion's carried. It looks like we're at the end of the agenda and we can adjourn. Thank you for your attendance today. Can you tell her the time? 218.